All right, quiet. He sees a little dog. Um, so this is his training area. Um, so understand this, that when we were taking a ministry down to the border, and then Robert Agee, who's going to follow me, a good friend of mine from North Texas, who grew up not too far from here, by the border across the Alamo, um, when he called me and said, we're bringing some trucks from Virginia Beach, the 1607 Covenant place, right? The landing. And they're going to come across America, and they're going to land in three places. Here, well, actually down by, down by Eagle Pass, the key motto, where we're going to set up a ministry. And then also in Yuma, and then also in San Ysidro, California. But the purpose of it is to shed light on what is happening here. This, this open border policy, of which I spent a lot of my time on in the last few years, has resulted in second and third order effects. What does that mean? That means there are things that have happened that were caused by something. And they are the second and third orders. Those are human trafficking, slave trafficking, unbearable things that we can't talk about here, to children. When I saw two little girls come across the, the border, three o'clock in the morning, in Roma, Texas, seven and eight years old, I will never forget those eyes when they looked at me and said, we're safe today. And they grabbed me in my body armor and my weapon with my dog and hung onto my legs. These two little girls. But I had to have them hand them to somebody with the federal government that has lost 86,000 children to date, probably more, because they're unaccompanied minors. That tells me, in my mind, as a soldier, they're not safe tonight. And every night when I go to sleep and think, I've got children, I've seen those eyes, I will never unsee those eyes, and wonder, where are they sleeping tonight? Because that's what this is about, humanity. It's not about just us. It's not just about them. It's about humanity. It's about love. The truest virtue of a soldier is, guess what? Love. Love you guys. I love you, each and every one of you. I've taken trips down range, and some of them didn't come back. I put them in a body bag and sent them home in a dignified transfer with that flag standing proudly to my right all throughout this audience draped over their coffins. And I will not... I will not do anything to to jeopardize my oath to protect the Constitution. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. All right. All right, so, that being said, this convoy is a peaceful assembly that will bring light to those problem sets, period. There are bad actors who are trying to infiltrate. That has been my job in this, is to be that person to, and this is not a real word, but the Army uses it, deconflict, which means I'm going to talk to law enforcement because we support our Texas law enforcement from the very top to the very bottom. To the, right. So does, so does Joe. Hey. Okay, leave it. Leave it. All right. I'm sorry. He's just excited. God bless Texas. That's right. My God. All right. So, I'm going to turn the stage over, but understand this. This started out as a grassroots, simple thing for me to take some ministry down to a lady and for Robert to marry that up. So how could that happen? Thank you very much. Lieutenant Colonel Pete Chambers. That right there is a true American hero. Amen. I met that gentleman not too long ago, and I knew instantly that this was more than a soldier for the United States military. This was a, a general, a commander in the Army of God. And we are so thankful for men like that, warriors who stand, they know what to stand for, and they know how to fight. This is a spiritual war that we're dealing with right now. So incredible to see all y'all out here. Oh my goodness, here we are. Dripping Springs, Texas. We're so grateful for all those who have helped us facilitate the needs 
of pulling something like, like this together. This is this is incredible. It's amazing what goes on behind the scenes just to facilitate this pep rally. We have another warm up rally tomorrow in Kimato, and then we got a bigger rally on Saturday, February third. I'm going to get into some of that. But we're just so thankful for all those who have come together because that's what this is. This is a we the people movement. This definitely isn't about me or any one person or any one group. You know, there are a, a group of folks, of six, six people who are the, I guess what you'd call a steering committee. Somebody who's, who ha had, had the vision and, and started putting forth the effort to, to create a flyer, to create a website, to, to get out there and create the awareness of pulling this together. But I can tell you this, it wasn't any one person who said, woke up that morning and was like, you know what, we should start a convoy. We should go down the border. You know, this was a move of the Spirit of God on the hearts of individuals. They got together and called one another. Like, you know, I feel like the Lord you know, is calling for a convoy. You know, out of my mouth came convoy and February 3rd. You need to test that spirit. Mark Anthony called Kim Heater and they started having a conversation about it. And they called me. They knew we were down in Texas and said, you know, Lord, Lord wanted me to call you and see if you're interested in a convoy. A convoy? I'm not, I'm not a trucker. I've never been in a convoy. No, I did join one of those convoys a couple years ago and jumped in and rolled with them in support. Matter of fact, we put up billboards. My wife and I, we uh, started a ministry back in 2021 called Banners for Freedom. You may have heard of it. Putting up billboards all across the nation. Started with the, the VARS data, how many people were injured and died from that experimental gene therapy shot. And that, uh, you know, that, that transition into other, other messages. Uh, we, we heard that convoy was coming along. We're like, you know, we got to get up some billboards for these folks and support what they're doing. To see if all of us do one thing, we can get a lot done. It's not about one person doing everything. You know, like they say, uh, David and Stacey Wyatt don't fly over conservatives if a million people do a million things. That's a lot. A lot that can happen. So, uh... I said, you know, that's a great mission. I don't, I don't know if that's my mission, uh, but let me pray about it, and I'll get back to you. Well, it wasn't about a few hours later. Lord hit me upside the head, and he's like, hey, you had to remind me of a few different things that have taken place in my life that he's positioned me for, for, for actually this, this month. I was actually scheduled to be down here in San Antonio this week. See, Grandma, bring boys down here. He's like, I already scheduled you in San Antonio. Don't you realize that? Oh, yeah, yeah. And you know Doc, he's already working down in Eagle Pass, got a, got a war room out here in Dripping Springs, and he's been going down there helping, helping the children and help fight this battle on the border. And good buddy Andrew Mullinex back there running the camera, he's shooting a documentary right now. And I started making some phone calls, and you know, doors just flung wide open in a way that I haven't, I haven't seen. And there was such a unity among the people. I said, no, this is the time. I feel it. I feel it in my spirit. We're supposed to do this. I thought, all right, all right, well... Let's put a message out there. Let's put a flyer out there and see what happens. Look at this. Well, what we're doing is we're coming here together, assembling peacefully, aren't we? Does this look peaceful to you? You know, contrary to what they're putting out there on social media and mainstream news and all that, you know, armed insurrection and you know, we're going to go down the border and take things in our own hand. And I, I get it. There are people that want to do that. There's people that say they, you know, want to do that openly. And they may even be planning on it. Where's it at? But I tell you what, that's not what we're doing. Amen. We're not going to the port of entries. We're not going down to the border wall. We're not going to engage with law enforcement or individuals that are going to be coming across that, that border, potentially. We're going to have a prayer gathering. We're going down. We're going down to the border, a border town called Kimato, 20 miles north of Eagle Pass. We're not even going into Eagle Pass. We're going to bypass that altogether. We're coming around the north because we don't want to cause problems for anybody. This is not about getting out there and doing a blockade or whatever nonsense is out there. We want to go and support this elderly couple who has a a children's ranch called Cornerstone Children's Ranch right down the border, and they've been working so hard, they've dedicated their entire life to create a place, a refuge for children 
for widowed women, for others in need. And they got decimated during the lockdowns, shut down, their whole ranch. They've been hurting ever since. And then illegals have been coming over there, raiding their food pantry. They've been stealing other property and giving them problems. Doc's been, been down there with his guys helping, helping secure the place. So, uh, you know, we had a conversation with them. We want to support them. We want to raise some funds for them. We want to get them back up in a position where they can help the children, because that's what this is all about. We've got to protect the children. The amount of human trafficking that's coming across that border, the child trafficking, the deaths, it's, it's atrocious. And I mean, it, it, it's got to stop. It's got to end. And, and much of it will end just by closing the border. Then you've got the fentanyl and the other drugs coming across, killing children, our loved ones. You don't even know where this stuff is. It's floating around everywhere. Then you got the bad actors that are sneaking across and aren't coming here for a better life. We respect, I mean, I, I, I respect somebody wanting a better life. This is the greatest nation on earth because this is a nation under God. And by God's sovereign hand, he has is, he is designated this nation to be a light to the rest of the world and people are attracted to that light. I get that. This is a nation founded upon immigrants. But it's the bad actors that are coming across wanting to do harm. These are all reasons why this border needs to be fixed. This border issue needs to be fixed. And these, these officials, these elected officials that we have elected to do this job that we paid and hired to do the job on our behalf have not been doing that job now. Governor Abbott, Ken Paston. They have done a few things here recently. You know, when this, this whole border convoy idea started, we, we had no idea that Greg Abbott was going to send the National Guard down the border. That was a week afterwards. Like, you got to be kidding me. The Eagle Pass? <laughs> that's, where, that's where we're going. He's doing what? It, it's all about divine timing, right? We couldn't have known that. Um, God led the way. God led the way, that's right. And he's leading the way on this whole thing. And, you know, we don't have any specific agenda to fix this problem outside of taking it before the Lord. Because ultimately the battle belongs to him. Isn't that what it says? The battle belongs to me. Now he calls, he calls us to march. He says, go and do. And he gives us instructions and we go and do. But he said, leave the battle to me. You know, it was just like the man marching around Jericho. He didn't tell them to go in, into battle. He said, just march. They marched for six days, and on the seventh day, he said, okay, I want you to do it seven times. They said, what? You know, we've been doing this every day for six days, and you want us to do it seven times in one day? Do you all feel like you've been marching seven times in one day right now? Do you feel like we're on the seventh march on the seventh day? We're going to march again? Another convoy? Another rally? When are we going to see change? I wonder if that's what they were thinking the moment those walls came down from the inside out and they reaped the plunder of victory because they got faith in the Most High and the one who, who's calling the shots. This is a Jericho march. This is what we're doing. You know, <laughs> God called Gideon's best 300 men. So I want the best. I want the ones that are looking forward, keeping their eyes on me, that are going to be obedient and listen to my instructions. Chose those men, mighty warriors. I bet they thought, okay, here we go. I'm skilled. I've been doing this a long time. I know how to go in the battle. We can, we can defeat these guys. And then they were given clay pots and candlesticks. <laughs> we got some mighty warriors right here in Texas. And we put we put microphones in front of them. And they're like, hold on, I mean, I, I, how, how do you work this thing? Is it on? Test, test. Ah, uh, these guys know how to handle business, but they also know where the battle lies. And they understand if they follow those instructions and they take those clay pots and they put those candles underneath those clay pots, and at the appointed time, they break those pots that light is going to shine forth across the valley and it's going to blind the enemy. The enemy's going to panic and he's not going to know what to do. 
And they're going to, you know, what, you know what happened to that army? Remember, they turned on themselves. They just sat up there on the rim of that valley and watched them defeat each other. They just walked in there and reaped the plunder of victory because they were being obedient because the battle belongs to the Lord. I know I keep report, re repeating this, but it's important. It's important because this is, a, this is a, a spiritual war that we're in right now. And we must be careful because the enemy wants to bait us into a physical war. He wants to play on our emotions. They want to put disinformation and create an element of fear out there. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, has he? He's given us a spirit of peace, love, and a sound mind. A spirit of power. Power because of the name above all names, Jesus Christ, Yeshua. That's where all the authority lies is in that name. And that's, what the, that's the name we're using as we march forward. Now I'm going to read a couple things to y'all. Kind of let you know what the agenda is. Hey, let me know if you see a helicopter flying. We got a very special guest coming. It's here? It's here. Oh, it's here. It's here already. Um, you know, it's funny. Doc was talking. He got up here and he goes, I feel like Forrest Gump. First thing I thought about, Forrest Gump running all the way across this nation. And I thought, you know what? That man is a lot like Forrest Gump. Because he didn't ask questions. He just said, you know what? I'm just going to start running. I don't know where it's going to take me, but I'm just going to keep running. And that's what Doc has done. And he'll, he'll, he'll run right into the fire. I appreciate, appreciate men like that. And we have many of them here today. We're going to be hearing from men like Trentis Evans, Michael Yawn, Ivan Ranklin, Ryan Zink. Matt Long. We got Matt Long in the house. You guys got to get to know Matt Long. Uh, and we've got some other lovely ladies here. We've got another gentleman named Chuck. George. Is Alex Jones coming? Woo! Anybody here if Alex Jones is going to show up? I think that, did Ann Vander still finally show up, babe? She's here? Okay. I think we're going to have some Ann, Ann Vanderstill with us today. We're going to have some, some, have us some Laura Logan. Yeah. See if we can hear from Sherry O'Donnell, Terry Isaac, state representative. And then I heard that, did I hear right Sarah Palin's going to be here? How does this happen? I didn't call these people. I told the Lord that I don't know what I'm doing. I, I don't. I don't. I'm just a uh, a very simple man from the backwoods of Texas, up in Bonham. born and raised down in San Antonio, right across the street from Alamo. Then you have a social media account a couple a couple years ago. And I go, you want me to do a convoy? You want me to do what? I'm not a public speaker. I'm not a. a you know. He's like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I put you up there. I, I prepared you for this. We banner for freedom. Did a remnant revolution tour here when you and your wife went around the nation last year baptizing people in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. You know what you're doing. Go on. Get out there. I say, well, you're going to have to send people. You're going to have to send some Aaron. And he does. So when he calls you to do something, he's faithful. And he's going to send the right people to help you. So don't think that you can't do what God is calling you to do. <laughs> he doesn't call those who are qualified. He equips those who he calls. I guarantee you, you step out in faith and you just start moving. If you hear the call, you start. he's going to send the right people. You don't have to have it all figured out. You just, just do the best you can do each and every day what's put in front of you. This, this, this movement that is happening right now is a, it's a very special thing. It's very provid providential for timing. But there's a lot of people that want to, to tear it down. So I'm going to read y'all a declaration. Just put it on record. Okay, I'm going to put a couple couple things on record. Are we live? Good. So, you know, I just want to I put a notice, a notice out to all agents and principals. This meeting is private, bearing false witness, misrepresentation, and posting inflammatory rhetoric in public forum is forbidden and shall be addressed in an appropriate manner to eliminate all conflict and false allegations 
Is there anyone in attendance at today's meeting, county, city, or township agencies present? Is there any responsible? Is there any response to the Bivens decision for the third and final time? I missed a line. Any member or agent of law enforcement agency or public agency of the federal, state, county, city, or township? If there's anybody here, are ye present? <laughs> Further, anyone who is under false pretenses, anyone who is working for any foreign government, including the territorial United States or municipal United States, anyone who is being paid or coerced to be here, must fully disclose their presence and purpose now or leave the premises or call. This is per the Biden's Act. You've been put on notice. Amen. The Southern Border Convoy, here, Convoy hereby makes the following statement and claim. We are calling on all Americans to join us in a peaceful assembly. We are acting on the First Amendment rights, which states, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or the press or the right of the people to peacefully assemble and to petition the government of a redress of grievances. Therefore, we first recognize our right to peacefully assemble. Second, we are exercising our rights to freedom of speech that shall not be abridged. Third, the American people are making their voices heard by participating in the convoy as a petition to the federal government for redress of our grievances. Last, we are exercising our rights to God. We are calling on all Americans to pray and join the convoy peacefully. We strongly condemn any violence as we call for everyone to be in honor and have clean hands. This convoy is meant to bring our country together in love, kindness, and peace. We call on everyone to respect our public police, sheriff, law enforcement, military, or anyone in a public authority position. We give notice to anyone who has ill intent not to join us. We are claiming these herein rights, along with all of our Bill of Rights, to make this claim of a peaceful assembly. Yeah. Now what we're talking here about here it's how the administration, federal government, are in violation of Article 4, Section 4. The United States shall guarantee to every state of this union a Republican form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion and on the application of the legislator or of the executive when the legislator cannot be convened against domestic violence. This is our Constitution. You know, Governor Abbott recently made a statement. Did you all see that letter he put out January 24th when he said the federal government has broken the compact between the United States and the states? Right. What we're talking about here is broken covenant. There's been too many broken covenants in this nation. Broken covenants with the Native Americans. Broken covenants with all sorts of different organizations and people and movements. Broken covenants between the federal government and the states. The executive branch of the United States has a constitutional duty to enforce the laws protecting the states, including immigration law on the books right now. President Biden has refused to enforce those laws and has even violated them. The result is that he has smashed records for illegal immigration. This is what, what our, uh, our governor here in Texas put out. And he said because Article 4, Section 4, has been failed to be imposed, the minister, this has triggered, triggered Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3, which reserves to this state the right to self-defense. He says in here more than 600 million illegal immigrants have crossed the southern border just in the past three years. That's more than the population of 33 states. He also says there's 28 legal points of entry in Texas. Very easy for folks to, to come to the United States, and we welcome all immigrants to come in legally. 
and that's why we have these these entry points. So we're thankful for these men, Abbott and Paxton, that are that are standing up to do the right thing. But we must continue to hold them accountable. They must continue to do this job. This cannot be for political political purposes. Can't be for election years. Can't be smoke and mirrors. This must be enforced, and this is the demands of the people. I'm gonna I'm gonna end this here in just a minute and turn it over to somebody. We're waiting for some special guests to come up here. I want I want, I want to tell you how this how this story was absolutely incredible. When my buddy Mark Anthony said, you know, I, I think this convoy is supposed to come out of Virginia. I said, huh, I don't know a guy. Y'all see that? You see that bus right out here to my my left? Uh, rapping God and Country. So, good buddy Craig Huggins. He was one of the organizers of First Landing 1607 Project, where on April 26, 2023, we recovenanted this nation back to God. I'd never heard about First Landing before. I've heard about 1620 Plymouth, Massachusetts, the Mayflower Compact. You hear about Plymouth Rock, all that good stuff. You hear about Jamestown. Right, first colony that was established. But did you know, two weeks before Jamestown, there was this first landing event where Reverend Robert Hunt led three ships over from England with his charter to declare this nation to be a nation that's going to serve God? I didn't know that. I didn't know that these three ships came off the shore of Cape Henry right there in Virginia Beach. They prayed and fasted for three days. Third day they got out, they cut the mast to their ship. And they made a giant wooden cross, and they penetrated that that ground there. And he read a read a declaration of covenant, dedicating this nation to God, and to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to all the earth, and to raise up gener uh, godly generations afterwards. Do you think that's the reason why we don't hear about that? You know, it's interesting. You go to. Virginia Beach, you go to First Landing State Park, they got a state park, they call it First Landing. You won't find anything about this cross, this covenant that was established. They stuck it on a military base around around the corner, around some bushes. You gotta get special access to get on there. Well, these gentlemen, Jack Stagman, Craig Hudgens, Donica Hudson will be joining us down in Kumato. Kumato, someone corrected me. Right, we say Kumato here. Kumato. Uh, these guys, got, we, we, we got together and Jack Sagman had a vision that God spoke to him and said, we must renew the vows with God before he issues us a certificate of divorce. We're close. We were so close. But he hadn't done it yet. And I believe that moment, Joshua James was there with us. Lieutenant Colonel Pete Chambers was there with us. Billy Ford, Republic of Texas, was with us. So many other others. This is going to be a small, small thing. Ragtag band of people. Next thing you know, you got Glenn Beck flying in his private jet, and David Barton, the author of the Founders Bible, and historian William Fetter. All these folks came in. They understood the importance of renewing those vows, repenting before the Lord, and renewing those vows with Him. And I believe He honored it. And it's just so interesting how this convoy started out of Virginia Beach, and it wasn't planned that way. Again. You know, he said, you know, Mark's like, hey, Virginia, I think Virginia is supposed to, where it's supposed to come from. And I was like, well, I know a guy's got an RV, and then it occurs to me. That's where the covenant was, was renewed. So God's doing something. We don't always understand what he's doing. It's usually hindsight. But what I can tell you is that he's with us. He's moving. There's a shift. The shift is here. The shift is coming. And we're about to walk into the most exciting, glorious times this world has ever seen. But there's a light that's about to shine so bright there will not be room for any darkness. There's a revival coming to this nation unlike the world has ever seen. And an outpouring of His Spirit in a measure that was greater than the former rain. We're talking about the latter rain. That's what we're that's what we're a part of here. This is the beginning of it. He's preparing all of us to be a part of it. Tomorrow, while I got all y'all's attention, we are 
I, I don't know if the owners are here, and I hope they're going to be okay with it. And if they are, and I believe they are, the gentleman who owns the gymnastics uh, center right over here has let us park at his facility. Uh, we're we're going to ask him if we can if we can depart from there tomorrow instead of the veteran memorial parking lot because that's kind of a small area it's really congested. We're going to see if we can meet over there. Uh, go to takeourborderback.com. I'll post it on there. It'll be on the X account, on the Telegram account. Uh, if, if you're questioning where we're going to depart from. But we're going to be leaving out of here at 10 a.m. sharp, so get there early. And we're heading down to Kumato. Kumato. We should be getting there around 2 o'clock. It's going to be an amazing time. Amazing time. We're going to have prayer and worship. we got Pastor Rob Parker and his wife Suzanne here. They and their ministry team that are going to be, be down there ministering with us. And we're going to have ourselves a good old time. And that's what we do here in Texas. That's what we do. That's what we do. Well, I've talked. I've talked enough. We 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 got some. We got some other people that are way more interesting to hear from. It is 5:48. Matt, do you want to get up here and speak while I'm waiting? <laughs> Good buddy, Matt. He's helping. He's helping us in tremendous ways. Tremendous ways right now. Hey, I've got you while you're waiting on time. Uh, ju just a moment. What's God? Is that a girl, Big Change? Where you at, my man? We, we, we actually, we, we need Sarah Palin up here right now. Thank you. Thank you so much. That, that's who we need. Is Sarah Palin in the house? Sarah Palin, can you hear me back there in that trailer? We need you out here, please, man. Can you play some music? No. Okay. Not a, not a, no. She's back there talking. I'm like, no, no. I, I couldn't jump, All right. jump off. Do it. Well, any of y'all have any questions while I'm standing here waiting for Sarah to get up here? Maybe I can address something. Go ahead. Where will you get on 35 to go south tomorrow? So we're going to head into from here to the southern part of Austin, where where wherever that intersection is, come from Dripping Springs and uh into uh, uh, hitting 35 right there at the southern southern part of Austin. We're going to avoid downtown. That's another thing. We uh, we wanted to avoid going down to Austin. Dave, we don't want to cause problems for anybody. You know, public safety is our number one concern. And having all these people down there on a the work day congested is just not not going to work. We have another question. We're leaving at 10 a.m. sharp. So I would suggest everybody get here no later than nine because we got to have some conversations. About what the convoy is going to look like as we as we move down. Yes, ma'am. Uh, at the parking lot over over across the street, where everybody's at the gymnastics center. Where are the scooters at? The bikers. The bikers. Are you riding the bike? Yep. Well, you're you're going to be right out up out front. so thankful for joining us. Watch this step right there. Former, former governor of the great state of Alaska. I am so happy to be here. I love that so much. Thank you. And I feel so secure here, I'll tell you. Um, a bunch of free and loving Americans. Thank you for being in the arena. Thank you for being activists. I know you love your freedom. And if you do, we're going to take a second here then to thank those who have protected our freedom. We thank our vets. Thank you guys. We honor you vets. Thank you so much. I'll tell you what. The eyes of the world are on Texas right now. On the whole star state. And as a proud Texas homeowner now, kids moving here, just right down the road, I feel um, a real affinity, a real connection to so many of you here in Alaska's little sister state, Texas. Absolutely love it. I do want to thank you for being in the arena, knowing that now, more than ever, 
It's required of us to stand up and fight for what's right. Because it's unconscionable. It's treasonous for what the federal government is doing to us. can say, look at real America. God bless you people. Real America, not far from the planet of the apes in Austin. I salute you for being here. And you know why I feel right at home? And this is serious times. I'll try to manage my emotion because my heart is broke right now. And I'd like to start by saying to all the veterans out there, and all the law enforcement and the citizens who took an oath to the sacred constitution. Amen. I'm going to be real cocky, which I'm really good at. And I'd like to apologize on behalf of we the people for allowing this piece of shit to get in the White House. We're sorry to the Vietnam vets and 58,000 dead heroes for this That's right. that this devil scum snake thinks he's the commander in chief of the United States of America we apologize for being so stupid and for bending over and allowing this to happen but as I look out there I do these things all over the country because for some reason people keep inviting me to these events and let me tell you why my name is Ted Nugent I'm a radical My name is Ted Nugent. I'm from Detroit. We were not the murder capital because we're more violent. We're just better damn shots, okay? I'm an extremist. I dare. I dare to experiment in self-government. I could have parachuted into America or onto planet Earth and I could have wrote the First Amendment because I have an instinctual right to speak my mind. I have an instinctual, natural perfect right to assemble against those who might not adhere to their constitutional oath that I hired based on that oath. I can protest on January 6th without the FBI causing all that violence. The king wouldn't allow me to choose my own religion, so I'm going to choose my own religion. I don't need a permit or a license for my First Amendment. I don't need a man to authorize my First Amendment. I've just got one from God. Nobody can intervene between me and God. Any questions? Yeah. Let's move on to the Second Amendment now, shall we? Yeah. Yeah. Constitution.
constitutional carry, what other kind of carry is there? What, do I have constitutional First Amendment rights? No shit! Yeah! What is with this compromise bullshit that has brought us to these horrific, painful, ugly, evil times? And it's because we stayed home, we didn't vote our conscience, and we let the snakes take over our country. So if you're here today, and you've never registered to vote, I want you to leave right now. Because you did this. That's right. And if you're here and you admit to your failures, you need to register to vote and get everybody in your family at church and school, at the bowling alley, at the deer camp, at the firing range, at the barbecue, and you need to demand that everybody in your life votes for the radical extremes of God, family, country, constitution, bill of rights, the Ten Commandments, the Golden Rule, the Declaration of Independence, law and order, self-defense, good over evil. If you don't do that, Nancy Pelosi would like to thank you. Any questions? By the way, that guy with that hat, I shot that hat for him. So anyhow, I'm proud to be here with Sarah Palin. She, let me, let me identify what Sarah Palin represents. She is the founding father's dream. She's actually my dream, too. What a baby. But she was a housewife and a mother. This is my wife. Nice dream. So I know a babe when I see one, all right? She was a citizen. And she was questioning the mayor's failures. And she didn't just question the mayor's failure, she took him on and she became the mayor. We the people taking charge based on the self-evident truth of the Constitution. Duh! And then she found that the governor wasn't performing his constitutional duties. So she challenged him, he didn't respond adequately, so she became governor! Sarah Palin didn't invent the middle finger, but she perfected it. As did I. We, we do a middle finger ballet every day to find the punks in charge of our failed government. It's a, it's a sad day, but I'm hopeful. I do these events and I see piss and vinegar. I see spirit. I see that my hat says, I will not comply. I will not comply. You tell me to do something immoral against my constitutional oath, you better hope that's all I do is not comply. I come from Michigan, and they've lost their soul. It's a suburb of San Francisco, like Austin, like San Antonio, like Houston, like Dallas. What the hell happened to Texas? Conservatives were sleeping. So if you leave here today with any spirit and piss and vinegar and defiance, You've got to fight to take back wherever you're from. We can do it. New Jersey isn't Newark. New York isn't Manhattan. Michigan isn't Detroit. Illinois isn't Chicago. Texas isn't Austin. But the, the goons have kicked our ass with fake ballots, with deceptive tactics. So, challenge those running to represent your constitution. I'm a cop. I've done federal raids with U.S. Marshals here in Texas. I've kicked down doors. I got 14 felony arrests on my credit, which is why my guitar playing is so much sexier than the other guys. In fact, here's a great story. So I arrested this dirt ball. We got a bunch of cocaine in the bag. And these guys are on the, on the, on the curb. We got him handcuffed. And he's got... <laughs> Ted fucking Newton. It was awesome. Yeah. And I gave him one. All right. So I'm 75 years clean and sober. If I had a little bit of sleep, I'd be downright handsome. I'll tell you what. But I'm here to raise hell. I'm here to defy the status quo crush the status quo, eliminate the status quo, and get back into absolute constitutional America. 
And if somebody's running for office that wants your vote, ask them, do you think I need a permit or a license or any man's authorization to have a gun in my belt? And if they hesitate, do not vote for them. That's the tip of the spear. If another man thinks he can tell me where, if, how, or what with I can defend my life, that is a bad, bad, evil man on the side of Joe Biden. I get to keep and I get to bear. Keep means it's mine, you can't have it. Bear means I got a couple on me right now and they're loaded. Amen. And no man has any say so in that, no man. Constitutional carry, what other kind of carry is there? Anybody remember Libby's Cafeteria? Yeah. In Texas?